Hi, I'm Joe James, and in Geometry Video 3, we're going to cover polygons and parallelograms. So, a polygon is a closed figure formed by three or more line segments. In other words, it has straight edges, and it's a closed shape. A quadrilateral is a special polygon that has four sides. So, here's one example of a quadrilateral. So, a three-sided polygon is called a triangle, four-sided quadrilateral, five pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, and octagon for eight sides. One thing you'll notice is that a lot of these, five, six, seven, eight, these all have congruent edges or sides and congruent angles. All the angles are equal. So these are called regular polygons. And one that has different angles or different sides is called irregular. So this is an example of an irregular octagon. The polygon angle sum theorem tells us that the sum of the interior angles, in this case n, or the number of angles, is equal to 5. The sum of the interior angles of an n-sided polygon is 180 degrees times n minus 2. So here n is 5. If we do 5 minus 2 multiplied by 180, we can determine that the sum of the angles in this polygon is 540 degrees. Now, it has 5 angles. That's really all that matters. It doesn't matter if the sides are different lengths, the angles are different measures, this is a regular polygon or irregular, makes no difference. The, the angles are still going to sum up to 540 degrees. However, since this is a regular polygon, all five angles are equal. We can just divide by five to get the measure of each angle. So the angles here are 108 degrees each. A convex polygon is a polygon in which no diagonal contains points in the exterior of the polygon. A diagonal is a segment that connects any two non-adjacent vertices of a polygon. So in other words, it passes through the middle of the polygon in most cases. And as you can see here with this one, there, is, there are no two vertices that you can connect with a segment that would enclose points outside of the polygon. However, with this concave polygon, you can see what concave means. It means that we can connect two vertices with a segment and by doing that, we can enclose points that are outside of our polygon. So this is called a concave polygon, and this is called a convex polygon. And regular polygon, we already explained, has congruent angles and sides. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral or four-sided polygon with two pairs of parallel sides. In other words, opposite sides are parallel. Now we know a few other facts about parallelograms. Some properties that all parallelograms have, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that's by definition, but also both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, which means they're equal. And both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So B and D are going to be the same measure, and A and C are going to be the same measure. Each angle is supplementary to both of its neighboring angles. In other words, they're going to add up to 180 degrees. So B and C will add up to 180 degrees. C and D add up to 180, and A and D add up to 180. And lastly, the diagonals bisect each other. As you can see here, the diagonals intersect at the midpoint of the diagonals. So the segment at either side of that midpoint are going to be the same length. That doesn't mean that the two diagonals are the same length. You can see that one diagonal, BD, is clearly longer than the other. So let's do a practice problem on parallelograms. Given the following parallelogram, find I, J, and K. So we can see one angle is 70 degrees. We know that the diagonal or opposite angle is 
j is going to be equal to 70 also, because that's one of the properties of parallelograms. Opposite angles are congruent. So j is equal to 70. And then neighboring angles are supplementary. They add up to 180. So i plus 70 are neighboring angles. They're going to add up to 180. And we can just solve for i and get 110. And since i is 110 and opposite angles are congruent, i and k are both 110. Now we've solved for all four angles in this parallelogram. A rectangle is a special parallelogram because it has four right angles. And here you can see four right angles. You can also see it has all the properties of a parallelogram. It has four sides, it's a closed figure, and opposite sides are congruent. We also know that the diagonals are congruent. That's one of the properties of a rectangle. So here we can see that the two diagonals are exactly the same length. Not so with all parallelograms, but with a rectangle, that's true. A square is a special rectangle. It, all four sides are congruent or the same length. All four sides are equal. Squares have one other unique feature, and that is that the diagonals are congruent and perpendicular. So in a rectangular, we knew that the diagonals were congruent, but they're not perpendicular. This is not a right angle intersection. But the square, the diagonals, intersect at a right angle. A rhombus is kind of a lazy square. It's bent over. So a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. All four sides are the same length. But the definition of rhombus doesn't tell us anything about the angles. So some properties of rhombuses. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So opposite angles are going to be the same measure, this one and this one. And each angle is supplementary to both of its neighboring angles. That's a property from parallelograms. The diagonals are perpendicular. You can see here the diagonals are going to intersect at a right angle. And the diagonals bisect each other. However, they're different lengths. So the diagonals intersect at the midpoint of those two uh, diagonals. And the diagonals bisect the four angles. So each angle is exactly cut in half by its diagonal. Let's do a practice problem on rhombuses. Find all sides and angles for the rhombus shown here. So we're given two sides in terms of x, and we're also given half of angle m, jmk, is equal to 41. So first thing we can do is figure out the sides. If 4x plus 7 and 8x plus 5 are equal, then we can set them equal to each other and solve for x. That's the easiest way to figure out the side length, since all four sides, by definition of a rhombus, all four sides are the same length. The first thing we'll do is move all the x terms to the same side and all the constants to the other side. And we get 4x equals 12. Now we divide both sides by 4, we get x equals 3. We can take this 3 and plug it back into either one of these two statements, and we can get side jk is equal to 4 times 3 plus 7, or 19. So all four sides have the same length, which is 19. Now we solve for all four sides of the rhombus. Now we need to figure out the angles. So we know that jmk is 41 degrees. And this diagonal is bisecting angle M. In other words, JMK is exactly one half of angle M. So we can just multiply this 41 by 2. And we can get the measure of angle M, which is 82. We know the opposite angles are equal in a rhombus. So M and K are both going to be equal to 82. And we also know that neighboring angles are supplementary, which means they add up to 180. So angle J 
is equal to 180 minus 82, and it equals 98 degrees. So J and L are opposite, so therefore they must be equal. So J and L both add up to 98 degrees. So that solves all the sides and angles of this rhombus. A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. So you can see it meets the requirements for quadrilateral, a four-sided polygon, closed figure. And what makes it a kite is the fact that two sides are longer than the other two. It has two pairs of congruent and adjacent sides. In other words, the two long sides are touching each other, and the two shorter sides are also joining. Some properties of kites, exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent. So in other words, this angle and this angle are not the same, but these two angles are. So we have one long side and one short side that come together to form an angle, and here we have one long side and one short side that form an angle. So those two angles are congruent. And the diagonals are perpendicular. We can see that the diagonals intersect at a right angle. Those are the only things we know about a kite. So if you look at a kite though, since these two sides are the same length, we actually have an isosceles triangle here. And the red, or the upper half, of this kite also forms an isosceles triangle because this and this side are congruent. So in other words, we have a pair of isosceles triangles that have one side the same length. Let's find the perimeter of a kite. Here we're given some of these lengths of the segments, uy and yv and yw. So we're giving uh, some of the lengths of the segments inside of the kite, the diagonals. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can use uv squared equals uy squared plus yv squared. So we can square 6, square 8, add them together, they add up to 100, take the square root of that, and we get 10 for length uv. So that's easy enough. This is a 6, 8, 10. And since uv is equal to 10, we also know that ux is equal to 10 because these two sides are congruent. Now we need to figure out the lower two sides, xw and wv. Well, we know this length is 12, and we know this length is 6. So again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem with 6 and 12 to solve for this hypotenuse. So we square 12, we square 6, they add up to 180. We take the square root of that and we get 13.4. So these two long sides are each equal to 13.4. Now it's a simple matter of just adding up these four sides. And we get 46.8 for the perimeter of the kite. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Each of the parallel sides is called a base. Each of the non-parallel sides, a leg. So in other words, we have two legs here that are not parallel, and we have two bases that are parallel. It, you could think of a trapezoid as a chopped off triangle and a, with a parallel chop to the base of the triangle. So the trapezoid mid-segment is a segment that connects the midpoints of the two legs. The length of the mid-segment is the average of the lengths of the two bases. So you have base 1 on top, base 2 on bottom. If you add base 1 and base 2 together and divide by 2, you'll get the length of this mid-segment. And you can see that the mid-segment is connecting these two points, which it makes it a bisector of these two sides. So an isosceles trapezoid is a special trapezoid where the two legs are congruent. 
these two sides have the same length. We have two pairs of congruent angles. Because these two legs are the same size, and because the two bases are parallel, we know that the diagonals are also going to be congruent. So we can see here these two diagonals are congruent, and we know that the two legs are going to be congruent. So that is an isosceles trapezoid because these two legs are identical in length. So let's do a practice problem. Given the trapezoid with the mid segment shown, find the length of base one. So we know that this mid segment is the average of base one and base two, and we're given base two at 26. So knowing that the mid segment is the average, we can say base one plus base two is equal to two times the mid segment. That's what an average is. So base one plus 26 is equal to two times 22. Base one plus 26 equals 44. And base one equals 44 minus 26, which is 18. So we really just we set double 22 equal to 26 plus base 1. And then we solved and found 18. That concludes my video on polygons and parallelograms. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.